Hello again, everybody, from the uh, national headquarters of RT America. I'm Rick Sanchez. Uh, we are uh, following what uh, seems to be a rather significant earthquake just outside of uh, Anchorage, uh, Alaska. Anchorage, as you know, is the most uh, populous city in the state. It's about uh, 300,000 people who, li who live there. Uh, we're being told right now that uh, the governor, uh, Bill Walker of Alaska, has issued a uh, state of uh, disaster for the area. And uh, as you know, who, uh, those of you who followed situations like this, when, when the governor declares a state of emergency that opens the door then for the federal government to be able to send funds to the state and the National Guard uh, if necessary, a couple of things that we should probably uh, pass on to you of note, uh, the Anchorage Airport, uh, the FAA, the, the airport was open for the longest time, but the FAA has just issued apparently a uh, ground stop saying no flights are going to be in and out of that airport unless there's any kind of government business. The U.S. Uh, GS, the uh, Geological Society, is saying that there is uh, low probability of lots of fatalities based on the uh, architecture style in the area there. One other very important note, the uh, Trans-Alaska Trans Pipeline, uh, we're being told the Trans-Alaska Pipeline, which, uh, by the way, runs from from Prudhoe to the north to Valdez to the south. And Valdez would then be just west, or pardon me, just east of, uh, of Anchorage. So it's in nearby proximity where the earthquake, that has also been shut down. So no oil going through there right now. Um, we do have uh, some uh, guests who I understand we might be able to contact by phone. Uh, we have some folks in the uh, Anchorage area who were actually there at the time that this uh, took place. Anna Kirschnack, uh, I believe, is going to be able to join us uh, shortly to uh, let us know what's going on in the area. I believe we have Anna now. Anna, are you there? Yes. Hi. Thank you, Anna, for joining us. I imagine it's been a pretty um, eventful day for you. Would you describe to us, I understand you were either in school or on your way to school at the time that this happened. Describe to us what uh, you experienced. Yeah, so I was in my second hour French class and I, we were in the middle of taking a quiz when the earthquake started and our teacher told us to get under the desk. We were all kind of really antsy. It was huge. Stuff started flying out of the bookcases and then the fire alarm went off and we went into emergency power and then we were told just to stay under our desk for a long while until an aftershock hit and then we were told to evacuate. And uh, hold on for just a moment. I'm sharing with some of the viewers now yeah. some of the pictures that we're looking at there. That is a courthouse, by the way, uh, one of the very first pictures we got. What you're looking at there now is a street where you see how just concave the uh, street surface is. Uh, it's almost like uh, an undulation in the middle of the road that just suddenly appeared out of nowhere. The authorities are on the scene now. Describe to us when you were at the school, Anna, what you first felt and what it's like now going through these uh, aftershocks. We understand there have already been 30 of them. Yeah, there's been a, quite a few. Um, some of them I can't really feel, but most of them you can feel, and I'm still getting freaked out by them. I keep running like underneath tables because I think it's going to be a big one again. But I was, I was super scared during the initial one. I was like, this. I thought it was like the 1964 earthquake all over again, where buildings would collapse or something. You sound like a very courageous young woman, and we're very grateful that you would be kind enough to share some of this information with us. Are you in a safe place now? I mean, what are they saying to uh, folks like you? It's cold outside, but at the same time, it's kind of dangerous inside. What do you do? So right now they're telling us to stay indoors and stay off the roads. And if you smell like gas leaks or anything, you should contact um, um, 911 or any emergencies. Um, you should call 911. And um, they're just telling us right now just to stay inside. But how do you stay but inside? Um, but how do, I, I'm just curious. I grew up in South Florida, so I don't know about these things. We don't have earthquakes. Yeah. We have hurricanes instead. I'm curious about... Are you safe or do you feel safe inside of a building knowing that there are aftershocks? Is How do you know the building is secure? Well, we, we don't really. The, yeah. there, the whole, the, most of the homes are up to code. And after the 64 earthquake, everything was pretty much rebuilt, ground up. So um, where yeah. I'm at now, I'm at, my, um, I'm at my neighbor's house right now. Um, 
I went over there just to check on them, and I'm there right now. They wow. have better cell phone connection. But, um, yeah, every aftershock, I'm scared that something's going to fall. I imagine you would be. Anna Kirschnack, boy, I'll tell you what, you're a remarkable young woman. My thanks to you. Uh, you're smart. You take us through this. You're able to make the explanations. And uh, we wish you the best of luck, not just to you, but to your family and everybody there who's going through this experience. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, I'm Rick Sanchez. This is RT America. And as you know, it's where it's always time to do news again. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.